we're opening our World Pro Ski Tour season in Granby Ranch, Colorado. It's always very exciting coming to a new place. I have never been here. How about Drew Duffy? Drew's never raced before. He's shooting for Rookie of the Year. As far as Rookie of the Year goes, that's definitely one of my goals this year on the tour. I'm Bodie Miller for the World Pro Ski Tour. Ready for an awesome day. Cold and gonna be fast. That was a tight finish. Congratulations, Nolan. It's been a long time since I've won one of these. It's nice to be back on top. Tomorrow is a new day. We've had a great summer. We're building momentum, and we're looking forward to this season. The World Pro Ski Tour, presented by Rocket Mortgage, brings you the Randy Open. I'm John Franklin, CEO of the World Pro Ski Tour, and we're here in Granby Ranch, Colorado for day two of our opening races. Yesterday was an epic and crazy day. Rob Cohn, who's won seven out of the last eight races, was dethroned by Nolan Casper. Come on! Let's go, Robbie! Nolan Casper is a multiple time Olympic ski racer. He won the tour in 2018 before Rob Cohn joined us. He managed to squeak out a narrow victory over Rob. It was so narrow, we had to go back to a photo finish to see who actually won the race. But at the end, Rob admitted that he was beat by just a couple of inches. So Nolan Casper took the day. Jack, it's mine, shooter. <laughs> Conditions are cold, the course is hard, the racers are excited to get back out there. It's the Granby Ranch Open presented by one of our longtime sponsors, Tough Shed. Today I won the World Pro Ski Tour event at Grammy Ranch, Colorado. Uh, it was my first win in four years. Today came down to, could you push for 10 runs? And, you know, I'm coming from pretty much zero altitude to Colorado, and luckily my legs were able to hold on, and, and I was able to hold off Rob for, for that final run. I went up against Nolan, it was a matchup, same sort of theme, it was just tough for me to find time in the lower part of the course. Some fast starts, that matters a lot, but Nolan was also juicing his skis really well at the bottom, like he was really working from tip to tail, finding energy, and that added up, and he, he took me out. I think for me it was mostly just get my ass out of that start gate as fast as possible. I was on the faster course first run and I had an eight hundredths of a second lead and I knew that that was going to be very difficult to hold on to. To start the day I was pretty nervous. I haven't been in gates in a minute. I mean I think it was March 2020 right when COVID hit but yeah I got one run down. Felt pretty confident after that run. Nolan showed his kind of grit in the last section of the course where he's chopping wine and cross blocking the gates. Whereas Rob kind of stuck to what he's comfortable with, which is why he's won the last handful of races, because he is so consistent. He, he does what Rob does, and he doesn't do what anyone else does. And that's admirable. But I think that on a hill like today, it showed, you know, with Nolan taking the victory that sometimes you need to risk it for the biscuit. I had a couple takeaways from working against Nolan, and I put those to work, and that was just juicing skis more. Also running the last five gates, just really direct, really straight, cutting off the line, and 
I learned it a little too late. It would have been great if I could have put that to work earlier against Nolan. The only thing I focused on after I got out of the start was getting my ski into the small groove. I mean, the snow here is great, and so there was a little groove, uh, and getting into that groove so that I could choose the tails and really push it. And I was able to hold them off and won by a hundredth of a second. It surprised me how like close everything was. Like, I think the top like six guys were all within two tenths of a second, which is not a lot. That was kind of crazy. I think I figured out that starting gate a little better today than yesterday, so keep working on that as well. I beat one of the other rookies, forget his name, and then I beat Simone. I felt like that was a big one. I mean, he's he's pretty quick, and he beat me by, you know, I think 0.36 or something on that first run. And then uh, I got beat by Nolan and got beat by Michael, but um, both close races, and I think once I learned how to do this start gate, um, hopefully I can be in that top three positions. Yeah, no one's super fast out of the start. He has it locked in. His timing is incredible. And then, I mean, people going up against Rob, I don't know if it's nerves, he's won so many, but people tend to make mistakes, and I just don't think that no one made any huge mistakes today. Tomorrow is a new day. I'm stoked because my Rocket Mortgage teammate, Nolan Casper, took Rob down. Someone had to do it. If it's not me, might as well be Nolan. Always a pleasure to be on the podium, especially with the likes of Nolan Casper and Rob Cohn. Still looking for that money in your home, Daryl? Yeah, this puppy should finally do the trick. Well, good luck. We found ours yesterday. Let me guess, in the attic. With Rocket Mortgage, we used our home's equity and turned it into cash. Equity? Yeah, yeah, you can do it on your phone. Check your phone before you wreck your home, Daryl. That was easy. When you want to find money in your home, Rocket can. Oh, that's all good, Daryl. I got a guy. Rocket. Here is a place situated off the map of ordinary, a place that is independent, free-spirited, and intimate in scale. A place that since its first lift was installed over 60 years ago has strived to stay true to its roots while growing better rather than bigger. This vision for the future has helped make us the first ski resort in the world to earn B Corp certification. It's a symbol of where we're headed and what we stand for. We hope you will join us. I think I still have a target on my back. I think that the other guys want to beat me. They sort of know. Here, it was a really simple race where you needed to nail the start, just be consistent and work in the skis top to bottom. Not including today, Rob's won eight out of nine races going back to two years ago. Uh, including today, he's now eight out of 10. Uh, so I think he definitely still has an advantage. He didn't do as well in qualifying, and so, he had to do better in the, in the rounds, and I got to buy, Michael got to buy. And so he, you know, he showed his consistency. I think it's always tough to be consistent, but you just need to focus on your round, your, your turns. Here, even though it's flat, you still want to build, build energy, build it. So you got to be on it. I think that breaking a binding is a more tolerable way to lose to Rob. It's not that everybody out there was rooting against Rob, it's just nice to see other people win. But it was a close race, and I think that's awesome to see. I'd rather see that than just somebody getting blown out. There's the ability for them to like hone in on what I've been doing, trying to be consistent, trying to nail each run. And so I think just the characteristics of the weekend allowed them to take advantage of the target on my back. I think that he's gotten pretty comfortable on that top seat, and we saw a couple crats get exposed uh, yesterday and today. He's always a fierce competitor. Total fluke, they stole it. Then we're gonna lap around, right? I didn't really feel pressures or other thoughts that would limit my ability to perform as far as the, uh, the desire to beat me from the other fellows. We've trained for years and years and years about controlling 
our emotions and not only on the day of the race, but forgetting about what happened. I know I'm gonna do a little mental assessment of what happened today for myself. And I know that Rob's gonna do the same. The final against Nolan, we're both having strong starts and we're both skewed fine through the whole course. It's just such a toss up. He definitely took advantage of some opportunities last year, but I wasn't gonna let that slip today. Sometimes the sandwich lands jelly side down and yesterday it sort of landed jelly side down for me. I wouldn't say it's over by any means. Yeah. Drew is a Dartmouth guy and a Middlebury guy, but we have a friendship. We've been on the US ski team together, so it's more friendly than a competitive environment with Malice. We're good guys. We want to see both of each other perform. I ended up actually racing for Dartmouth for two years. I was two-time All-American for them. Got fourth at NCAAs and then GS at Stowe. I definitely think Drew Duffy's going to win Rookie of the Year. I know he's not going to win a single race this year. Um, and actually, that's valid. That's valid. <laughs> Today, I had a great battle with one of my good friends, Drew Duffy, who I was lucky enough to coach when I was at Dartmouth with them. We had a nice little Dartmouth contingency on the podium in the top four. Drew went to a, a rival high school, and you know, we always used to kick their ass in soccer. I don't know about that. I, we never lost you guys. Maybe while you were there. All right. Racing Michael was awesome. I knew that I'd have to give it everything I had to, to beat him. I was close, but again, those guys, they've got the start dialed. The Rook, yeah, he's a wild card. He was a national champion in Super G. Super excited when I heard that he was racing here, just because I hadn't seen him in a while. Yeah, I heard a lot about the start gate. Um, all the commentators were talking about how bad I was. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm new here. Rob, Michael, Nolan, Simone, all really quick out of the start. I'm pushing out and they're already five, 10 feet in front of me. I would tell Drew that he needs to anticipate the gate opening a little bit more. Right now he's being a little reactive. He needs to be a little proactive. What happens with the gate is if you go a little too soon, it is far better to be a little too soon than a little too late. Right now, he's leaving, I'd say probably two, two to three tenths in the gate, which is also a scary thing to think about if he's getting fourth with leaving two to three uh, tenths in the gate. I like where I'm at. There's some other pretty fast rookies out there. I was actually surprised to see, I think there's like three or four of us, but ultimately like I made it into the small final and those guys didn't and yeah, got some, got some extra points. So I like my odds. Inspection tomorrow is 11 now, and then qualifications will be at noon. Pro race introduction for the round of 16 is at 1.30, and then we'll race after that. My game plan for tomorrow is just to, you know, ski as fast as possible. I think focusing on the qualifying and just putting myself in a good position. Tomorrow on this course, I gotta work on kind of not getting ahead of myself. I'm a third jump today, would often kind of see the finish line before I got there. And so I would stray away from my fundamental technique and approach to the course and just kind of try to get to the line before I was there. Coming into the race, something slowed me down after the first jump. So we need to analyze the videos, the photos, and then we have to look what we can make better tomorrow. I did see a couple of the fast guys like Nolan and Michael who got some buys early on. Hopefully I can be in a position to get a buy for that first round. And so tomorrow is definitely, it's another day. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery. I'm gonna go out there and, and push as hard as I can and see what happens. I think I'm gonna try a similar method tomorrow. It really happens up top. You need to have a good start, get out and stay ahead and just be disciplined all the way to the finish. Rob is just a machine, man. It's, you make one mistake, you're out. So um, I'm gonna just go get ready for tomorrow. Beating some veterans gave me some confidence. Getting beat by someone like Michael or Nolan, that's okay with me. I think I'm off to a good start. 
I think for the next race, Drew is a good opportunity to clean up his start and get his ass down the hill, but he's charging against some guys that have been skiing for more than he's been alive. The predictions are that the three of us, the Dartmouth boys, the boys in green, are gonna all have buys, so that means we'll go one, two, three. But you know, yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery. It's a new day. I'm stoked for Nolan, 13th throwing in Rob. Also, don't forget, Team Rocket Mortgage here, out to an early lead in the season standings. Rocket Mortgage, with all these winnings, I'm gonna buy a home. <laughs>
these hurt for sure. And tomorrow they're going to hurt. But when I'm between the start gate and the finish, I can't feel it. So it's, it's gonna hurt before and after the runs, but you know, that, that is what it is. I feel old some days and then look at him and Michael and Rob and realize that, you know what, like those guys are older than me, so yeah. Spent a lot of years rehabbing crutches, had two cartilage transplants and just, it's not gonna feel good. And people ask me if, if there's anything, if I need another surgery or something, and the answer, the answer is, yeah, I need a knee replacement. But the goal is not to have one before I'm 40. Next stop on the World Pro Ski Tour is in Aspen Mountain on the classic Pro Hill of Little Nell, where many years ago, Jean-Claude Keeley and Spider Savage and the guys went head to head. We're returning to that venue. Our team is super excited to go to Aspen January 8th and 9th. I think Aspen, I think it's really important that we have a three or four really major resorts on our schedule every year. Aspen is one of the top resorts and it's one of the glamour resorts and everybody wants to be in and having our guys there will help, you know, and bring more interest and more interest, more sponsors, more sponsors, bigger than so. We used to have our championship there every year and it was an incredible event. So I think that will be a great event next year. I just love the town of Aspen. It's got great energy. My best friend from the US team for a long time is from there, so I spent a lot of time there in the summers, going to concerts, mountain biking. I know the town well. I grew up skiing, having vacations in Snowmass. My grandparents had a house there, and so I just kind of, it, it sort of feels like a homecoming of sorts, and so I'm gonna try to really hone in on that energy. This weekend I learned that the start's going really well. I wanna just take that and roll it forward into Aspen, make sure the start's nailed, and then uh, hopefully in Aspen we'll have a few more turns with some more shape, swinging across the hill more. The hill's gonna just kinda release gradually onto the flat, whereas this was just kinda immediately into the parking lot. So I think those characteristics of the hill will be favorable for me in Aspen. I'll be able to test out my new equipment from Vocal and Del Bello, that's awesome. But, you know, we're still kind of acquaintances, and so I'll get to learn a little bit of the nuances and the quirks that the skis have and be able to come into Aspen feeling more comfortable on my skis. You know, I think I'm gonna train by resting. My body hurts, my hips hurt, a lot of bruises. Uh, and uh, I think I'm gonna have to ice my knees down tonight and hopefully get five, six days before the next races. But a couple days at Dual GS doing the Aspen Ajax Cup, which is their fundraiser to support their youth programs for kids up and down the Aspen Valley. Michael Ankeny Fan Club might be out in Aspen. Yeah, we'll see. Well, I think there'll be some people rooting for me. I'll hear a lot of ooyahs and maybe go out to the Red Onion, have a couple beers, <laughs> see the local population, maybe hit up Belly Up, go to a concert or something. And yeah, I think that there'll be a few people rooting there for me. Looks like they're locked and loaded and ready to go. As we get ready for qualifying. Just a little nice warm up there for the core. Get some rest. Have a good night last night. You race the clock, not the athlete next to you. When the doors open, the clock starts. Red course ready. Blue course ready. Racers ready. Out on course they go, racing the clock. Both guys ski for the same team. Pretty cool. Ankeny on the red course side, really staying low, trying to get as much energy out of the ski without standing too tall. There's a little bit slight turn in the course. I think that the blue course is a little bit more consistent. 
out on course. The Slovenian Mihak Kruner on the blue course side. Better with the tour now for three years. Simone right moves Kamalander, upset by the rookie Drew Duffy yesterday, not happy about that. Really watch him pump the skis. Red course ready, blue course ready, race is ready. Coming out of the start is Tucker Marshall. Let's look at Marshall's first run time. He was fourth quick with a 23-187. On the blue course side now is Marshall. Oh, okay, you're too limber. Never heard that before. Always trash talk at the World Pro Ski Tour, but it's all good. Good solid skiing from Marshall yesterday as he crosses the line with a 23.055. Back to the top, the defending champion. He's first fastest on the hill. It's one thing that I gotta try and keep going. It's all about timing. So, be a little weaker and a little, a little out of shape, and it doesn't hurt me there, but this course is so much of it's to start. You gotta get out of the start fast and get going. Carry your speed down through these flats. Race is ready! And then Jake Jacobs, got a blue course side, getting a good strong start over the rookie Logan. That was good, fun. Some work to do now. Yeah, got to do a little better now. Ooh, a little bit too straight. Jacobs coming off that bottom up out of shape is the rookie, Mark Logan. Well, I actually flew in from Toronto, first pro tour, so getting a little more comfortable. It's all in the starts here, especially with it being pretty flat. So did some video analysis last night, and I think it's going to make the difference today. Of uh, course, they go, working their way down through the second run of qualifying. Loose on the blue course side, Fletcher home on the blue. Our gate's a little tough. Just getting speed out of it, I get locked up sometimes, and then other times it's just like, I come up and then I'm laid off the get-go, so I try and put it all together for this next run. It's the same as yesterday, so nothing too different. It snow's a little harder, which should make it a little quicker. Just gotta go a little straighter throughout the whole course. It's pretty flat and easy, so not much to it. What a beautiful day, looking good. That's how we like it. It was a pretty cold night, but like perfect. You know, parking just in front of the start, beside the course. I mean, how amazing is that? Maybe that's only here in Granby Ranch, how you can do this. But if I, are you like really up on your tails? Oh, that's too high. So it has to be like a... Yeah. All right, let's do one more start. One more train, one more train, one more train. Out on course to take off. Simone over on the blue course side, clock ticking away. Good even start for both these guys. Touch it down. Ooh, Simone landing a little bit out of balance, but he gathers back up quickly. Pulling up my tips and tails a bit. Got that aggressive Colorado snow. Don't want too much grab on this flat here. Goose out front over on the red course side. The Canadian, strong qualifying effort for him yesterday. Well, I think there's always a chance. You never know what's going to happen. I feel like the gates, no problem. The jumps are also no problem. Uh, maybe taking a little bit more rest, a little straighter, you know, maybe a little crosswalk on the gates. But I think it's one and lost how it starts. Thurwood Colby and Tucker Marshall on course. Marshall out front there in the red course side, putting together a solid run against the rookie Thurwood Colby. If you're good at the start, you should be able to do better in qualifying. And if you're not, then that should show as well. Out on course they go. Two powerful starters, two powerful skiers. And these guys, hard to tell them apart because they're on the same team. They're on all the same gear. I mean, yesterday was it was amazing. And I was able to just edge Rob out the line. We've got to figure out who's going to want to push the hardest and be able to do that consistently over 10 runs. Just kill that start. Just get your body moving before it opens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yesterday I saw everybody just put in front of me right on the start. Well, you got it. It's your first, first weekend of the start. Yeah. Man. You don't want to get better. Yeah, I hope. Aspen will be cool. It's got some steeper sections. It'll be fun. Red Force Ready! Blue Force Ready! Race is ready! Robert Cole, Cole with the go, strong start. Duffy figured it out. Duffy, that's been his weak point yesterday, is figuring out the start. He figures it out. He is right there with the big boys. Drew Duffy winning the Tito Speed Cup with a combined time of 44.70. He was also the fastest single qualifier, so that gives Duffy the number one spot in the ladder. Yeah, feeling pretty good about it. Here is a place situated off the map of ordinary, a place that is independent 
free-spirited and intimate in scale. A place that since its first lift was installed over 60 years ago has strived to stay true to its roots while growing better rather than bigger. This vision for the future has helped make us the first ski resort in the world to earn B Corp certification. It's a symbol of where we're headed and what we stand for. We hope you will join us. I love having a 15-step commute um, to my office. <laughs> it makes it super easy in the morning. I loved working with Tough Shed because I could get the really nice office space I wanted for a price that worked for me. Very easy to finish out the interior of the shed. The studs are where they need to be for an interior finish. And it helps me to really disconnect from, from work than when I go inside. I love the, the separation between the two. So I really had an easy process with Tough Shed. Well, back in the early days, Bob Yachty started the Pro Tour, and it was all men. It was called World Pro Ski. A couple of years after he got it going, a girl named Jill Wing started a tour called Women's Pro Ski Racing. Up to come higher, got off to a better start, had a little, a bit of a lead coming out of there, but it has evaporated as Dal May has caught right back up and now skis side by side. They competed independently from the men's tour. And then Biotti's tour had folded, we had started growing, and so we got a group together and we bought it. And we ran it separately from our tour. We built it up and we were coming along. Very aggressive and wild, off the second jump. Any sort of accessibility into the sport is really important. We want everyone to get involved. It's open registration every single race. And at the end of the day, it is about the community. And so we want both males, both females, ex US ski teamers, ex college racers, ex USSA racers, everyone to just come out and kind of just like bask in the glory of the sport. Cool. Kathy gets a great start. She does get a great start. She's going to need it. I know that the Pro Tour has done maybe one or two women's races before, but trying to incorporate more women's races in this whole series, I think is an awesome initiative. I mean, I personally watch every single women's World Cup race. My girlfriend, Nina O'Brien, is 15th in the world in GS right now. She's prepping for the Olympics. And I could see her and her teammates coming to some of these races. It's a really interesting format that you kind of gain this camaraderie with your competitors that is unparalleled in the normal format. It levels the playing field. And so by opening up to the women's, I think that that gives them an opportunity to come into the dual format. I think that this gives a really good opportunity for skiers who still have passion for the sport to come in and really show their skills and to continue to progress with their racing. In the old days, the women never got as much money as the men, and they were always upset about that. And this time, we're very conscious of that, and we plan to make these two tours very equal. Right now, the top women we'll get will be mainly women off the college teams. Most of the kids that race are potential college kids, but the college girls are really good too. The top college girl could probably be on the World Cup, no problem. And so there are lots of them out there. We'll probably have a race around eight. We might get to around 16. On the World Cup, you make good money, but you know, if you're 10th, you're only making, I don't know, $1,500. And you know, like girls up there today, if they took the W, that's 10 grand. So I think that's pretty special. Yeah, and I just like, Again, I, I have this personal connection, but I think that the whole field feels the same way, just getting more exposure to women in sports. What we're gonna do this year with Rocket Mortgage Women's Pro Ski Tour, we're gonna do three events. They will be at the same time as our events. They will be on the same hill, on the same course, and we will be running our event. And while our guys are going up, the lifts to get ready to do their run on our event, the women will be doing their run. So they'll be right joined together, but they'll be separate races within the same format. Next stop on the World Pro Ski Tour is the Women's Tour in Aspen Mountain, January 8th and 9th, presented by Rocket Mortgage.
Hey Rob, can you tell me what you're about to do with the GoPro? Yeah, we're about to do a course preview, so I'll, I'll run down this thing first. I'll give everyone uh, sort of a summary of how it's going to be running. So I'll voice over this, this run. And pumped to do it. I like to load up right at two and drop it. Nice hard skates, bring in the first couple of skates, right in the first jump. Preload that, slam the toenail from the front of the boot. Bring some energy in all these turns of the flat. Get ready for a nice little skipper. Into the final little section here, so we can get some energy off the last jump. And we do that, come right over the kicker, pulling up in the finish, final, gate boom, and reach for it. Does it feel cool to be like uh, one of the first people we see on TV or what? Oh my God, it feels very cool. Hi, mom. <laughs> And then just yeah, walk it through how the course runs. What am I doing at each section? And I'm representing Europe. Let's go. I'm out of the gate. Lost the pole. Let's go. All right. Push. Push. Jump over. Zorb. Land. Go. 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 A free jump. Now. All right. Again. I'll do a free jump. You're pushing. You're trying to be smooth. Good free jump. Come to the finish. All I was focusing on was a pre jump, and that's pretty cool. Thank you. Beautiful. All right. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward. Prospects. Today under sunny skies and temperatures in the teens, racers have a second chance for first place and they are fired up and chomping at the bit. Who wants it more? Will Cone turn up the heat? Will Casper show up and bring it? Or will a new face win the race? Let's find out now. This is the Grand B Pro Open and this is the New World Pro Ski Tour. Crooner, crooner, super tall, long. He really gets power out of the start. Simone Breitfus, Kamalan, they're hungry for getting eliminated yesterday by the rookie. He's out in front. I have to go, I have to push. And that's uh, the main key for today's race. You have to push until the finish. It's going to be Simone out in front. He's going to cross the line first. 0.308. Oh, 
Bruner to Slovini against the Bolivian, jumping out on course. It's going to be interesting to see what the hell happens. Yeah, it's a total matchup. Squeeze, squeezing it. <laughs> you guys, squeeze it. it. You, guys, you guys are both in there, just, just riding with the arms. The Slovenian out front, putting some gas down. Here comes Simone, pulling back alongside Simone. Is he going to turn it around at the bottom? Or yes, he does at the finish line. We're super excited to be back in starting gates. I know that a lot of us, this is our first time back out on skis. Just happy to be competing again. Couldn't ask for better snow conditions. Race is ready. Go, go. Ramy Ranch brought to you by Tough Shed. Coming out on course, Hank, and he gets a jump on Cone. That's what he needs to put the pressure on Cone. It's Ankeny out in front. This is what he needs to do. But here comes Cone, starting to focus. Blue course side. Ankeny's still out in front. Cone really puts those skis away from the gate a little bit. He can really get some energy. Ankeny's still out in front. Here comes Cone, charging hard. Looks like it's gonna be Ankeny crossing first. Snow's holding up really well, and coming out of a win yesterday, I feel real confident. But very small margin, so we really have to push him today. Racing's ready. Yesterday's winner, Olympian and former Tour champion. Let's see what he's got for the rookie Canadian, Carl Coos. The experience here on my first World Pro Ski Tour has been awesome, and yesterday was a super fun event, racing against all my friends. Racing ready! It's Drew Duffy, rookie on tour. He's no rookie. There's a lot of camaraderie in this racing. I mean, you know, I'll say good luck to every one of them. I want to see them ski well. Ultimately, I want to beat them. Awesome to have this new rookie Speed Cup winner, Drew Duffy, coming out just showing these guys he can get on the podium. And he goes on. Probably feels good, I feel good. It's just gonna be about getting out of the start fast against Drew Duffy this second round. Right you want some tips, Tugger? Marshall with a good, strong start. Like Duffy's figured out the slow start. He's given it up a little bit yesterday in the start, but it's Duffy out in front. He's playing a little bit. He's gotta bring some energy. Absolutely. It's just let Michael do all the work. Ready. Yesterday's winner over the rookie from Canada. There goes Casper with that super powerful start. Stamping some authority on this run against Paul oh, Goose. I go up. It's all right. I think you do have to juice a little bit more. Yeah. A little more than yesterday. The doors open up and out they go. Oh, look at Cole. Powerful start and get the jump on Ank and he touches down about dead even. It's an interesting race though, because it is a little bit on the flatter side, but you really need to generate speed. Can Ank and he straighten it out? He knows he's in trouble now out in front of Stone, goes across the line first. It is looking a lot like yesterday. I'm up against Simone. Hopefully I can beat him out of the start. I think I can beat him on the course, so we'll see how this goes down. Camelon, it looks like he got a little bit of a jump from my perspective, not by much. Duffy's right there with him, touch it down. Duffy out in front already. It's yesterday on the course. I think it got me into a good rhythm. I have no idea what he's doing, just getting lucky. This guy is the real deal, facing off against our number three of the two of the overall. This is the first of two runs out front. Simone's gonna try to straighten out the best he can, but it's Duffy out in front, the rookie cross the line first, and he takes the advantage of a point three, five, seven. Let's be quick through the middle. It's a drag race, like everyone's saying. Racing, out of the start they go, there goes Cone with the advantage over Casper already by about a ski slank as they touch down. Yeah, this is a similar matchup as yesterday. We both know the start matters. There's some micro train halfway down, and just trying to find and squeeze any speed you can. Casper pulling alongside Cone. It's any man's race. It's the line. It's going to be Casper crossing first. Yesterday was super fun. Uh, glad to be in that small final. Looking forward to race Simone again. Let's go up and try to find it out to his faster. Out on course, Duffy gets that jump point three five seven. The doors open earlier for him. We've got that advantage built in the start. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out the start gate. A lot of these guys are super fast, like Rob and Michael and Nolan. And the timing is key. It's going to be the rookie Duffy moving into the next round. I think you can all see him running a little straighter line, and for me it works. And some people it hangs him up, so I just got to run my race. And another matchup of the big final yesterday, so it's going to be another fight. Casper out on course, good strong start by both guys. Cone, as usual, super powerful, not much of an advantage, but it's Casper holding on to that advantage. We make our way through the mid part of the course. Casper's still out in front. He touches down with that advantage. Cone doesn't seem to be able to get the same kind of energy we've seen season after season. Casper in control off the bottom bump, but he knows he has the advantage after the first run. He's going to get it done. Into the finals goes Casper against Duffy. Cone will get down to face off against Simone in the small final. Okay, we're down to top four racers, Drew Duffy, Nolan Casper, Simone Breifus-Kamalander, and Rob Cohn. Drew Duffy, before yesterday, 
Hadn't even skied a pro course before, hadn't used these gates. The small final, first of two runs. Cole, predictably, he gets the jump, and he's been our fastest to the first jump in our Seiko speed to the first jump. Touch it down. Out front, first run in the semi, or excuse me, the small final. Out front still is Cone. Simone trying to close the gap as they head for the finish across the line. Gets a kick board and out, of course they go. And it's Cone with the advantage built into the start doors by point two eight four. Can Simone turn it around, put the pressure on Cone out front, maintaining the lead. Holding that gap as he touches down with the advantage over Simone. Doesn't look like it's going to happen here today. Gets some good strength out of it. Simone doing everything he can, trying to close the gap, but he needs to make up a 2 8 4. Not going to happen today. It's going to be toned at the line first. If I had a pin right now, I would drop it, and y'all could hear it. That's how quiet it is up here. There's a lot of stress going on right now. We got Drew Duffy, yep. Nolan Casper in the finals. Great, 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 great. Casper ready to go, and it's Casper getting the jump on the rookie. There we go, Casper out in the front. He's been quick out of the start. He's really got that timing down. I think the snow's great. Tracks hold up really well, and got a new pair of boards out, and they like the flat, so see if I can harness it for a couple more runs. But here comes Duffy pulling alongside Casper. Casper has been really fast at the bottom. Anybody's race, this is going to be one that we're going to have to go to the tape. No, it's Duffy crossing first. Nolan Casper has to make up that time to win. Nolan won yesterday, but Drew right now, he's poised and ready. It's all coming down to the wire. Oh, the light goes down, the drag race on snow begins. Nolan Casper, Duffy touches down behind Casper out front, trying to make up that point zero four five. that Duffy hold on for the first run. Drew's gonna make it up, it's right here. Can Duffy close the gap down? Casper has the advantage. Right here, come on, Nolan still got it. He's gonna be back to back for Casper. Here comes Duffy. I think it's still Nolan. He's gonna hammer away, it's gonna be Casper. Oh, I don't know, go to Clark. Oh, Drew Duffy wins. Point, point one, three, nine, the wow. rookie wins. Duffy did it? Duffy did it, everybody. Drew Duffy has arrived on the World Pro Ski Tour. What a race, everybody. How about that? It's Drew Duffy, so it's two Duffy. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our award ceremony for the Granby Ranch Pro Cup. Brought to you by Tough Shed. What an incredible day of racing. John Franklin, CEO, what a day, huh, bud? It's a great day out here. The weather could not have been better. The racing was great. Action, fast and furious. The new champion, Drew Duffy, rookie of the year so far for sure. Thanks for joining us on the tour this year. Nolan, once again in the finals. Um, great to see you out here. And Rob Cohn back up here with Hal Kuhn from Tough Shed. They became good friends last year, but uh, I'm sure they're looking to spend more time together on the podium. And Simone from Austria by way of Bolivia, once again on the podium at number four. Um, I want to thank Jason Andy Wirth, who helped us put this all together. They're the general manager and his partner. Of course, Rocket Mortgage, our new presenting sponsor. Seiko for keeping that timing uh, correct and presenting some watches. And of course, Hal from, from Tough Shed. The Tito's team is here tonight. We've really got a great group of uh, partners and sponsors for the Pro Tour. Who's this guy standing next to you? Probably one of the original pro ski racers, the legend, Billy Kidd. What do you think, man? This was awesome. This is absolutely great, right? Uh, I was in the uh, on the World Pro Tour just a short five decades ago, but it's gotten so much faster, so much closer. Uh, it is outstanding to have sunshine and powder snow here in Colorado and some of the fastest racers on the planet. It is a great day for racing. We're looking forward, Billy, to going back to Steamboat and see you Holliston Hill, February 14th, 15th. Come join us there. Okay, without further ado, in fourth place, Simone Breitfuss Camelander. Robert Cohn in third place, your defending champion for two years. Number two, Winning it yesterday is Nolan Casper. Standing next to you, a 26-year-old rookie, Drew Duffy, winning the Speed Cup and winning today, putting his stamp on the World Pro Ski Tour, brought to you by Rocket Morgan. All right, it's champagne, it's court bell time. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, it's fun just like being in the mix with all these guys, been watching it for years, uh, thinking, you know, oh, I think I could be in there with them, and then showing up. Yeah, these guys are they're fast and uh, trying to 
trying to keep up with him out of the start and just be consistent every run. Uh, I was nervous going against Nolan. He's quick. He was the winner yesterday, but yeah, great, great to get a couple good results under my belt uh, right off the bat here. I'm walking away from this weekend with I think uh, 12 grand. Yeah, pretty pretty psyched about it. <laughs> I'm flying to Europe on Tuesday, so that this at least covers the flight for sure. And then yeah, so we'll see. Good stuff here. That'll wrap it up from Granby Ranch. See you in two weeks in Aspen.